Um, just so everybody knows, I'm recording this, so we have a copy it for copy of it for folks who can't join us this evening. To quick walk through, if you're not uh, seeing the function yet, there is a chat function where you can type in questions during the webinar. I do encourage you to write questions as you have them. And at the end, we'll go ahead and do a Q&A session where I'll try to answer as many of those as I can. If you are having trouble with the audio, I guess you probably won't be able to hear this. So I put in the dial-in instructions, so hopefully that'll work for folks. I do see we have several people that appear to have audio anyway. So we'll go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Thanks everybody for joining. And um, if you, like I said, if you have any questions, go ahead and type those in as we go. We are talking tonight about the new multifamily organic recycling drop site program, specifically in its pilot form, but with hopes, of course, that it will last longer than that. And uh, for those of you who I don't know, which is probably a good number of you, my name is Emily Barker. I'm a solid waste recycling specialist here with the city. I'm in our public works department, so if you're not familiar, I work in the building where you're picking up your compostable bags. And uh, we're going to go over several things today, but I wanted to start with the purpose. In addition to the fact that we get several requests every year for organic recycling opportunities for multifamily residents, we recognize that we, well, we have a really great, robust curbside program for the folks who get our city services. That only represents about 60% of the St. Louis Park population. We have 10,000 households that are in multifamily buildings. So that's apartments, condos, and townhomes that don't receive city services. So it's a pretty significant chunk of folks who, for, for that reason, do not have access to our curbside program. In addition, we know that there aren't a lot of multifamily buildings, to be honest, if there are any, I'm not super aware of them, in St. Louis Park that offer organics recycling to their residents. It is the state law and the local ordinance that multifamily buildings provide recycling collection for all of you, but there aren't any specific rules around organics recycling at this time. The other thing is that we know about 30% of trash could be composted, and we'll talk about what that includes but that's a decent amount of our garbage. And for those of you who maybe aren't steeped in this world, uh, it may, may not be something you're aware of, that the state and county have recycling goals that are around 75% by 2030, and organics recycling is included in that. Right now, the state hovers just under 50%, so it is gonna take some work to get to that 75%, but one of the only ways to do it is to add organics recycling and when 40% of the population doesn't have access to it, it's difficult to make that work as well. So this pilot is really geared towards seeing what we can do within the multifamily uh, portion of our residents uh, to increase that organics and to provide you all with a place so you don't have to throw those items in the garbage. So here's the pilot project details. You may already be familiar with a good amount of this information. The project started officially July 15th, and it'll run three months. There are three drop sites. If you haven't already been to them or looked at the map, they're at Texatonka Park, which is near Minnetonka Boulevard, just off of Wyoming, Creekside Park, which is near the Municipal Center here on Oxford, and Bass Lake Park, which is across from the Rec Center. Who can participate? As we already mentioned, it's any residents who live in apartments, condos, and townhomes that aren't serviced by the city's curbside program. And finally, as I mentioned, if the program grows well, we don't have a lot of contamination, the goal is and intent is to continue the program after the pilot. So that is why we're doing the training to hopefully get folks the information they need for help making this pilot a success. So the first place I wanted to start on is what can be accepted? And hopefully there are some things that are obvious. So we're gonna start with the big one. Um, but before I go there, I wanted to just um, put out there, you all will or have already received a little guide. And the big kind of mantra we have is that we would really like people to stick to the guide. If it's not on the guide, 
then either ask myself or another public works staff person or throw it in the garbage. And this is really important that we prevent contamination. And I'll show you what that looks like again in a few slides, but for those of you unfamiliar with the composting process, it's not like recycling. They are able to sort out a few contaminants within the recycling world. The me mechanization is very different. The composting world is, is much more complicated. And when we, they get bits of plastic and stuff like that, it's harder to get that out. And a reminder that the product they're making is something that people want to put in their garden or for planting projects or we use in our roadside projects. So we really want to keep all of the contaminants out. So what can go in? The first big category is, of course, food. Hopefully you all knew that. The one thing that might be a surprise for any of you who maybe have done backyard composting in the past is you can really put all of it in there. So it's not just the veggies and the fruit scraps that you maybe have done backyard, but it includes all of the meat, fish, seafood, bones, any dairy, eggshells, and eggs, pasta, rice, beans, bread, cereal, flour, nuts, and shells. So it's a whole host of things. This includes any raw foods as well as cooked foods. So maybe it's the banana peels or the orange peels, or maybe it's the leftovers that you forgot about, forgot about in the back of the fridge. That um, we all have that happen sometimes, and this is one place that you can put it instead of the garbage. Other things that come out of your house, or your home, that you'll be able to include are some other, mostly things out of the kitchen. The big ones are coffee grounds, if you're a coffee drinker, the grounds and the filters. Most of those are paper filters. I'm admittedly not aware of any ones that aren't reusable that are not paper, so those are all fine. Tea bags, do watch. There are some that are synthetic uh, plastic, so we want to watch for those, but kind of that typical paper tea bag is just fine. Any paper napkins or facial tissues, paper egg cartons, toothpicks, chopsticks, things like that, and any cut flowers uh, that you may have like in a vase in, in your home. The other category, and this is the one where it gets confusing, so if it's something that just is difficult and, and isn't something you want to worry about, uh, that's fine, but we do want to make people aware of the certified compostable packaging. And the big thing on this is I want folks to look for the BPI compostable logo. You'll see that up in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. And there are a lot of products out there these days. The, um, it's become more common because there are more manufacturers making these products. But also here in St. Louis Park, we have an ordinance that requires restaurants and other food establishments to use recyclable or compostable items when they serve food, if, it's, if they're not using reusable items. And so many places have gone with compostable items, and you'll see here a couple of examples from, from some of restaurants in St. Louis Park. Um, on the left is a, a cup example, so you see the logo there on the bottom of that cold cup. Some of them don't have the logo, but they'll say compostable, and um, you can see that middle cup there says certified compostable. There are a few unlabeled items that are online, and those, uh, those types of things would be like pizza boxes, like a greasy pizza box that's too dirty to recycle. And so uh, that's one example there. The clamshell you see above the pizza box, that's, you'll sometimes find those where they're not labeled, but they're just a fiber-based. Um, a fiber-based clamshell. Cutlery is one of the trickiest pieces. Um, there, unfortunately, for several years were some items that were really problematic. They were not, in fact, compostable. And um, some of them, you know, they caused a lot of problems at the compost facilities. When you are either buying these, say, for a party or for your personal use, make sure you look for that BPI logo or other indications that it's certified compostable. If you get it from a restaurant, which admittedly there aren't very many of, um, but if you get those, uh, make sure you ask or verify that they say compostable. Unfortunately, phrases like biodegradable or made from plants by themselves don't indicate that the product is compostable, so you really want to look for that language.
In terms of items that are not accepted, uh, this list is, looks longer than the other ones, but it's because we get a lot of questions and we want to make sure that it's really clear to folks what we do not want in the organics recycling bin. So the first one is recyclable. So these things should go in your recycling bin at your, at your apartment or your condo. So any glass, metal, plastic bottles, things like that. The, another item that unfortunately causes some confusion are frozen food boxes. These aren't great. The recyclers don't want them and the composters don't want them either. So whether it's a frozen pizza box or like a take or a microwave dinner, those items need to go in the trash. Some other plastic line items that are unfortunately a problem include that kind of takeout pail that's in the bottom left of your screen. These, unfortunately, to our knowledge, there really aren't any compostable ones out there and they are all plastic line. So the plastic is actually like on the inside as a water or like a grease or moisture barrier. Uh, so those items unfortunately would need to go in the trash. Same thing with any plates that are uh, like a decorated. So the one in the bottom right hand corner, anything with print that generally has some sort of either chemical or plastic involved to prevent moisture going through them. So those are all ones that need to go in the trash. There are paper plates that can go in the organics recycling. Typically, there I always tell people there's those like really thin ones you get that you almost have to use a couple of them to keep them from leaking. Um, but if it ever says grease resistant or something like that, you know, leak proof, that's a pretty good indicator that it is not compostable because there's some sort of plastic involved. So in general, we again encourage you to look for that BPI logo um, or the um, or some sort of indicator that says certified compostable. The other things that we don't want in here are fast food wrappers. So I mean like sandwiches from a, a sandwich shop or hamburger or something like that. Unfortunately, those often also have a plastic lining. Food and packaging. This is unfortunately something we see a lot where somebody's cleaning out the fridge and a bag of carrots have, rot have gone bad, they're partly rotten, and people don't want to open the bag, so they just throw the entire thing in there. Unfortunately, that bag is going to cause contamination and the carrots may or may not break down anyway. So we really need, if you're, if you're not able to empty bags, then that needs to go in the garbage. But otherwise, you'd open it up, put the carrots in the organics and the plastic bag in the trash. Same thing with any sort of chip bags, granola bar wrappers, candy wrappers, those are all garbage. A couple other things we really don't want to see in the organics are diapers. Uh, it, there are occasionally claims out there, there's some biodegradable ones, but there aren't any accepted by composters here in Minnesota. The other thing is pet waste. This is a really common question we get. Um, unfortunately, the compost facilities are not allowed to take pet waste, so specifically dogs and cats, if you have animals, those things need to go in the garbage. And um, the final thing is yard waste. Well, our curbside program does accept yard waste if you have friends that you know in homes we do have yard waste in that program, but with the drop sites, we are not accepting yard waste because unfortunately it just would fill the carts up way too quickly. So if you are staying in a condo where you have a little garden, please do not include any of that yard waste in with, in with our program. So this is a picture of what contamination looks like. The city does a couple of sorts of our organics material, a couple, uh, usually twice a year. And this is admittedly concentrated. It's all the, or the contamination that was pulled out during a sort put together. So unfortunately, this wasn't just one load. But a few things you'll see here. Uh, first, non-compostable trash bags. Sometimes what I think happens uh, is that somebody empties things out and they don't realize, uh, you know, like some another family member that's not typically used to emptying things takes the wrong bag and puts it in there. Sometimes it's an accident. Hopefully with this pilot project, that won't be the case because you'll actually be putting it in your vehicle and driving it somewhere. Um, but just be careful with, with bags. You really, really need to use compostable bags, and I'll talk about that in another slide. Here's an example of the food in the bag, as I mentioned previously, and then a freezer box from like a TV dinner. So those are some things we definitely don't want to see um, because it does make a big problem for our compost facilities. The next thing I wanted to talk about is how exactly you set this up in your home. I have had some folks ask, 
you know, what kind of container should I use? What, where do I put it? How do I make sure it doesn't smell? So really the, the thing I suggest is figuring out what works for your household. It's gonna be different for everybody. Uh, in my house, we have a pullout bin on in our cupboard that we use, decided to use for organics because our trash is so much smaller, we put that under the sink. So you may have something like that. If not, uh, you may wanna make space under your sink or some people put it on their countertops. There are all sorts of different containers out there specifically made for collecting food scraps in a kitchen. You'll see those couple middle photos or some examples. There's plastic ones, there are metal ones, there are fancy uh, porcelain ones with carbon filters and all sorts of things. And they all work, uh, you know, they'll all work if it works for you. So I would invite you to check it out. You can get a lot of these online. There are stores locally that sell uh, these options as well. But really just find something that works for you. It doesn't have to be an expensive thing. Um, the one, the picture on the right you'll see is just an ice cream bucket. And this is another really great option. If you wanna just find some sort of pail you can repurpose. I know many people repurpose the cookie buckets from the state fair, that's a nice good size. Um, but find something that works for you. If it doesn't work, trade it out later. Um, one thing I wanted to put out there, some people worry about the smell. Uh, this is typically not an issue because something to remember, it's the same material you would have been putting in your trash. So it's not different than your trash, it's just sorted out. But it does help to have a little bit of airflow. So if you get something with a lid, um, make sure it's got some, some air holes, things like that. Um, some people like to put stuff in the fridge and that keeps it from smelling as much. So you can put it in a pail and then maybe wait to put it in your compostable bag until you're ready to take it to the drop site. So that is one option if you, if you prefer that. Of course, that requires space in your fridge, but that's something that works for some folks. So in terms of compostable bags, as I've mentioned several times, BPI certified is a must. I just realized I didn't actually say what BPI stands for. Some people, somebody asked me that earlier today. BPI is the Biodegradable Products Institute. This is an independent uh, nonprofit that does certification that products, mostly plastics in particular, have been tested and that they actually break down as they say they will and that they don't leave any toxic or harmful residues, that they just break down the same way that food and other items break down. So this uh, this is the main entity in the United States that is recognized for doing that certification. There is another group called Cedar Grove. This is actually a compost facility out west that actually does testing themselves. They are much less common, especially the further you get from the west coast, but you will occasionally see their logo as well or their name. The big thing here is that regular plastic bags are contamination. So whether it's a grocery bag or a bag from your newspaper or any other plastic bag that's not certified compostable, this is a garbage bag. It's not intended for organic. Unfortunately, you'll see here, this was a picture I took from one of the drop sites the other day. This is a non-compostable bag um, and unfortunately is contamination. I will be checking uh, the drop sites on a weekly basis to kind of watch for this, but please do uh, pick up the bags from us so you can get started using the right ones. Uh, and if you ever have a question about the type of bag you can use, please don't hesitate to ask. So compostable bags, where do I get them? Hopefully uh, you have already stopped by, I know many of, you, many of you have stopped by our municipal service center to pick up your starter kits. We're providing either three or 13 gallon bags for you to get started with and hopefully that will get you through several weeks uh, to uh, try it out and see if it, that size works for you. This is a little picture there of what the kits look like in case you haven't picked one up. So you've got your guide and then the bags rolled up. After you're out of those bags, there are a few different options. The City of St. Louis Park does actually offer those same bags in larger quantities for sale. The three gallons are 100 for $11 or 13 gallons are 50 for $15. Well, you are under no obligation to purchase those from the city, generally speaking, that is one of the best prices you're going to find, primarily because we buy in such large quantities and then um, we basically sell them to residents at cost. So that's one option. 
The other options are retail. I did make some calls to folks or places here in St. Louis Park and verified that the businesses on this list do all sell compostable bags uh, of some kind. They sell varying brands. Uh, usually most of them sell the three gallon and the 13 gallon option. So depending on what you prefer, most of these places will have both of those. But you may want to call ahead to check. You can also buy online. I don't have any recommendations of where to go here, but I do just want to reiterate, beware of anything that just says biodegradable. Unfortunately, there is a lot of this stuff out there in the bag world, and you'll sometimes see the word OXO biodegradable or biodegradable additives. If it's not certified compostable, it's simply a fancy trash bag. Um, I did have a question about whether or not certain color of bag was an indicator it was compostable. Unfortunately, that is not the case. You really do need to look for certified compostable logo or that language. So please make sure if you're ordering anything online that you don't, that it is in fact certified compostable and don't get something that's just biodegradable. One little caveat, City of St. Louis Park does not endorse any specific compostable bag or retailer. We do have the brand that we sell, but it's not to say that there aren't other good options out there so please find what works best for you. Next thing I wanted to chat about is compostable bags and how to tie them shut. So unfortunately, most compostable bags don't have drawstrings like trash bags. So you may have uh, become accustomed to just being able to pull that shut. Unfortunately, that is not an option here with, uh, with our compostable bags. So I want to show you a little video this one minute clip will give you a good idea of how to tie the bags. Um, the big thing we wanted to remind you is just, we don't want any twisty ties, rubber bands, or other no, non-compostable closures, um, because those things, of course, would be contaminants. And hopefully folks can hear this. So I'm gonna show you now how to tie the bag. I have mine with a lid um, for the odor so it doesn't cause any problems. And um, as I pull the bag out here, you can see it's only about two thirds full, which is what I recommend. So then you have an easier time untying it. And what I do is try to kind of get things down toward the bottom, squeeze out a little bit of the air, and just do an overhand knot. Nice and, nice and tight. Another option if your bag is a little fuller, um, and you can't do the overhand knot. If you roll the top down a little bit, so you have a nice closed um, top, and then you can bring these two end pieces together and tie them and do a couple overhand knots as well. So hopefully folks could hear the audio on that. If not, I will definitely send out the link after that so you can watch it again. Um, but as you can see, there were two options uh, that might work and I, per I personally do the second option. I find it to be a little bit easier, but it's really up to you what you're able to make work. So the next thing is where the sites are. I know some of you have already used the sites as I've checked the bins and we've had some usage already, which is really exciting. But here is the map. I sent the map out in everybody or to everybody in the welcome email. But you can see here, we when I was trying to figure out the sites, I took a map of the city, looked at where all the multifamily buildings were, tried to find some that were spread out enough that they would serve a good number of multifamily residents. For those of you who might be up in Flard Park, I apologize in advance. Uh, unfortunately, because these carts are picked up by the same drivers, the same hauler that picks up our curbside stuff, we did have to keep them in areas where the trucks were already driving. And because we don't have any single family homes in Chillard Parkway or park area, the trucks do not drive up there. So unfortunately, there are some limitations as to where we can put them. So I wanted to just show you where these are now and let you know that if the, if the program continues after the pilot, my hope is that we could add a couple of other places. We're not going to add any during the pilot just to kind of keep things uh, so we can kind of see what the usage is. But the hope would be is that we, is if we continue, that we could add a couple of sites. 
So the other thing I wanted to point out for those of you who haven't been yet to pick up your bags, that uh, blue little dot there is our building. So you can see we're just off of Louisiana, south of Highway 7 on Oxford. The picture there is of the one at Texatonka Park. It's kind of in the end of a little cul-de-sac turnaround just on the curb there. Last thing I wanted to chat about are the locks. For those of you who have not used the carts yet, we do have them locked, and the primary reason for this is contamination. Because these locations are at parks, we really wanted to make sure we didn't get pet waste or cigarettes or other things that should not be going in the organics recycling. And so we're actually following, Minneapolis has a drop site program as well, and we're following their lead in, in adding locks. Now, we've selected a combination lock. You have all received the code. I'm not going to repeat that here uh, since this will be posted, but you'll, you've all received the code. And the way that you open these up is you put in, you line up the numbers, so the code, you input the code, then you push down the shackle, which is essentially the curved part of the lock, push that down, and it'll pop open. When you're done, you can scramble the code and squeeze the shackle shut, and that will relock the we lock it. Uh, we do ask that you make sure to do this every time. It, this helps, like I said, with a contamination issue, which is really our primary concern during the pilot um, in terms of logistics and making sure that these are good locations. And so we really appreciate your help uh, with making sure that the carts get relocked. If by chance you ever notice that there's an issue or that the lock is gone, I would really appreciate if you email or call me and let me know right away so we can get out there and replace that. Hopefully that won't be the case. The other thing is if when you bring your things to the carts, if you notice, these will be emptied on a weekly basis, but if you notice that they're particularly full, please let me know. We will definitely look at adding additional carts at each of the sites if the usage gets high enough. So we want to make sure that there's space for everybody to put their stuff and that they're not getting too full and overflowing. So that is pretty much the end of, of what I had prepared. I would definitely love to take some questions. Um, one thing I wanted to just say is that in a couple of weeks, you'll receive a survey from me. I haven't exactly written the questions yet, but basically it'll be along the lines of how frequent you've used the site, uh, kind of if the distance you've, draw, you've had to drive is workable for you and your household, things like that. So we would really appreciate your feedback. That feedback will be key to uh, helping the program continue. So we ask for your participation in that. And then the last thing that isn't specifically related to the organics recycling here, but I wanted to throw out there since you all obviously have an interest in, in doing this kind of stuff, St. Louis Park recently launched a recycling champion program. That program is for residents who are enthusiastic about recycling and organics recycling to be peer educators. And we do have a number of folks already in multifamily buildings that are participating, but we would love some more, especially to help promote this and other recycling and answer recycling questions. So if you're interested, please do let me know. We have a training coming up on September 20th, and we would love to get more multifamily residents involved with that. So my contact information is on the screen, but right now we'll take some questions. I do have one question here. Please type them in if you have any ad other additional questions. The question is, are cardboard and wood matches okay to put in? Wood matches should be fine. Uh, I don't any reason why they wouldn't be okay. Obviously, it's probably best to make sure they're actually used. So if they're just ones that have gotten wet um, and still have the, I don't know exactly what's on the end of them, but it'd be best if that was removed. But if it, you know, if you burn that off, that's just fine. Cardboard is best recycled. So if you're talking about like cardboard boxes from packages, that's best to go in your recycling at your building. If it's cardboard, like from a cardboard pizza box, a delivery box where it's really greasy, or for some other reason has gotten contaminated, that could go in the organics recycling. So, okay, there's another question. Uh, somebody came and joined us late. They were asking about if they have to tie in before depositing the agreement. And yes, so they do need to be tied shut. Um, the 
So because the cards are sitting out and because they will actually have a lot more material than say a typical curbside one, we really want to try to keep them clean. And we'll do our best to you know, wash them out every so often, but tying them shut will really help with that. So we ask that everybody tie them shut. And for folks who miss that part, if you want to re-watch the video, I, I played a little video about how to tie them shut, but we definitely do want them tied shut. The key with getting them to be able to tie shut is to not fill them all the way to the brim. So usually two thirds, three quarters full is about as full as you're going to want to fill your bag. Another question, will there be a cost to participate after the pilot if the program is implemented? At this point, we do not intend to have any sort of cost. Um, I, I think that that would be a barrier that uh, wouldn't be ideal. And so we definitely don't intend to do that. Uh, we know the county has some potential support for encouraging organics in multifamily buildings, so we're, we're hoping that the, it may be that we can't provide the compostable bag starter kits indefinitely, but at least for the pilot we'll do that. But in terms of actual participation, we do not intend to charge for it. Another question, one of my bags was leaking, so I double bagged it. I assume that is okay. And um, said I wasn't sure if there was an actual leak or whether it was con condensation. So as long as it's compostable bags, that's just fine. Uh, they, their, yeah, bags are, the compostable bags are just fine to double bag. And that does occasionally happen. It's a good question. I know at our house, sometimes if we have a lot of coffee grounds one week, or if say I've done a bunch of cooking and I have a lot of veggie waste and it's really wet, I will get some kind of seepage not necessarily like a, a tear or anything. Sometimes I do think it is condensation, um, but it's totally fine. One suggestion is that you know you put put your organics in some sort of container that you can then put in your car to transport. So whether it's a pail or a five gallon bucket that you dedicate to the purpose, so then you obviously aren't just putting the bag directly in your car, so or a, you know, a Rubbermaid tub. And then if it leaks in the cart a little bit, that's okay. So don't worry about using another bag um, in order to prevent a little bit of leaking in the cart. We just don't want everything to come out into the cart if a bag is untied. Okay, so the next question is, would the city be able to run a pilot in existing HOAs, I am assuming that's homeowners associations, with more than a specific number of units, like 100? Um, I am getting, I'm assuming that that's like if a pilot at the building where we would have carts at a building. So unfortunately, we are not able to offer the carts at buildings that are that large because we can only do carts in the way that our program, we do have some small multifamilies like eight units or less that do participate in our program. The challenge is, is that we can only do carts and we only, we have to limit how many we provide per site, and so it gets a little bit tricky. That said, if this is something you're interested in and you know that you have good interest at your a building, we would definitely be happy to sit down with your property management and see if they would be able to add the service. Hennepin County has some great uh, funding and support for getting these types of programs started at multifamily buildings. They'll actually help pay for the cost of the hauling and compostable bags for a period of time, as well as help do education. And we would love to see that. I know it's not practical at every building because of space reasons, but um, the county definitely is interested in seeing more multifamily or organics recycling. So there is definitely support for getting those programs started. But in terms of the city program, because we only do carts, we can't offer dumpsters. It's a different kind of truck that picks up a dumpster than a cart. Um, we're not able to offer that for large buildings. So somebody asked, how many are participating now? That's a great question. I actually meant to say that when we started. I'm really excited. Uh, in the first week and a half of promotion, we have 65 households signed up, which is really exciting. I was not really sure what to expect. A lot of you saw the article in the Park Perspective and on Facebook and next door, and so I'm very happy with the response. We would love to have more people during the pilot, of course, to keep it going, uh, but 65 is great in the first week and a half. I don't know how many people have actually dropped material off. Of course, you know, it takes a little while to get a bag together, 
about, I think, a fourth of the people have actually picked up their bags. I know some people already had some compostable bags that they already had. But yeah, it's very exciting. So thank you all for being part of that. Next question, do you anticipate the carts will be locked ongoing after the pilot? This is a good question. If you are familiar with the Minneapolis program, they were able to unlock some of the locations. This really all depends on usage and contamination from non-participants. So unfortunately what happens is somebody who doesn't know what the cart is for, walks their dog or finishes a soda or something like that, they walk by, they're not paying attention, and they drop in something we don't want. So it really kind of depends. So for example, at the Creekside site, there is a trash and recycling nearby that hopefully people would use instead. But at the Bass Lake site, the cart stands alone, and so it, we definitely risk contamination. So that'll be something we have to try out. Uh, it's possible we could test it, especially in the winter time when maybe there isn't as much park usage. I know. That was something Minneapolis did as they unlocked them in the winter time, but then maybe relocked when there were more uh, more park users in the summer. So we'll definitely watch that. That'll be kind of one thing we we work out during the pilot. But that's a great question. Okay, I think another question: Where else can we buy compostable bags? Are they available at the supermarket? Uh, yes. So there was a slide. If you are able to go back when the recording comes out, but. There are several places in St. Louis Park. Um, the Target, I actually only called the one on 100, but I assume they both carry them. Target, Cub, both of the hardware stores, Ace and Jerry's, and Costco all for sure carry them. Okay, let's go back to that slide really quick. Yeah, let's see here, or Lunds and Byerly's. Home Depot I called and they could not verify they had any but the really big like lawn and leaf compostable bags. So those are like 30 gallons and would not be ideal. Um, Sam's Club did not have any and those are all the main places I called. There may be others that I that I missed, but uh, there are, fortunately are several. The cities also, uh, you're also able to buy them from the city. And um, we do offer larger quantities. Often at the stores, you'll be able to buy them in like quantities of 20. We do have larger, you know, three gallons, you could buy 100 bags. So it would last a really long time. You could split them with people in your building if you wanted to. Um, so yeah, that's what the options are there. Um, okay, it looks, yeah, there was one other comment about the locks, which yes, they might be tricky in the cold weather. And I definitely uh, think that'll be something we have to look at. And it may be even that we can just kind of put a bungee cord in the winter time uh, to d deter people from just lifting the lid quick. So we'll we'll see how that goes. But yeah, we definitely know that the cold weather poses some potential problems with law. Okay, well, I don't see any other questions. Does anyone else have any final final ones you want to get in? Of course, we always have our emails that I'll be sending out. Uh, I do apologize in advance if it's kind of on a weekly basis to get started, but we really want to make sure people have the information they needed. I will try to make them shorter than the introductory email, um, but especially if we have contamination or questions that seem to come up a lot, we want to make sure people have the information they need, and um, then it'll just be kind of periodic about after that. So thank you again for participating both this evening and in this program. We really are, I, I've been with the city for just over a year and really excited to get this going. We've been wanting to do it for uh, for a while and so it's very exciting to have the support and the, the response that we have. So thank you and if you ever have any questions, please do reach out. And with that, have a great evening.